Almighty God says, Man doing his duty is in actuality the accomplishment of all that is inherent within man. That is, that which is possible for man. It is then that his duty is fulfilled. The defects of man during man's service are gradually reduced through progressive experience and the process of his experience of judgment. They do not hinder or affect man's duty. Those who cease to serve or yield and fall back in fear of the defects that may exist in service are the most cowardly of all men. If man cannot express what he ought to express during service or achieve what is inherently possible for him and instead fools about and goes through the motions, he has lost the function that a created being should have. This kind of man is considered a mediocre non-entity and a useless waste of space. How can one such as this be dignified with the title of a created being? Are they not entities of corruption that shine on the outside but are rotten within? Amen. Amen. God's words help me understand exactly what duty means. It means that no matter how talented we are, we have to be prepared to fully put into play everything that we understand. We can't cut corners or just go through the motions. We have to keep striving as God requires. That way we can make up for any weaknesses or deficiencies in our duties. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, we'll get better and better results. Right. 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 Sure. I have an experience about this that I'd like to share. Sure. 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 Recently, the church wanted to film some videos of solo hymns. Our team leader wanted me to sing the lead vocals and play guitar for one of the songs. When he told me about this, I was a little nervous. Singing and playing the guitar is harder than just singing. Plus, I'd tried doing a solo like that before. But while singing, I missed my chords. But when I focused on the guitar, then my facial expressions appeared to be off. In the end, they couldn't use the footage. Faced with the same task, I wanted to say no, but I didn't think it was God's will. My brothers and sisters all thought I was well-suited for the song, so I figured I should go along with it and do my duty. So I accepted the role. After two days of practice, I'd grasped the singing and performance parts, but the guitar chords were hard to remember. With just one day to go before filming, I was becoming really anxious. I was afraid that it was past the time for practicing. And if I did keep practicing, well, what if my hands got swollen? Regardless of discomfort, I might not even remember it. In thinking of that, I didn't want to pay the price for it. So I kept trying to think of the perfect solution for me personally and for this difficult problem. That's when I had a great idea. I could ask the person using the camera not to film my hands too much. So then we wouldn't need to work so hard on these annoying guitar chords and we could still film the video. It was a good idea. I was actually a little bit uneasy when I had this idea. It felt like I was being very irresponsible. Right. Right. What if there was a problem and we had to reshoot the video? But then I thought to myself, Time is so tight, and it's such a hard song. It will be so taxing and stressful to play the song well, and I just can't perform above my level. Besides, this will help get the video out as soon as possible. Everyone should understand. After that, I focused on my singing and performance without worrying about the chords. I figured it should be good enough. When it was time to film, I asked the brother filming not to do so many close-ups of my hands. I didn't think there would be a problem of any sort. But the next day, the director said I was playing some of the chords wrong 
and asked me what was going on. I felt so guilty and my face turned red. I thought, oh no, will we have to reshoot? So I rushed to ask the editor if there was any other solution. He said to me, I tried, it's no good. On hearing this, I knew we'd have to reshoot. I felt bad knowing that I had caused such a big problem. Later, when we got together to discuss exactly what had happened, I told everyone my reasons for doing what I'd done. A sister reproached me and said, why didn't you tell us you hadn't learned the chords? Now we have to film all over again and the whole project's delayed. This was careless and just irresponsible. Yeah. Yeah. I just could not accept what she said. I thought, didn't I do my best? The fact is that I can't play the chords, and I did it to make sure that the video was finished quickly. They just shouldn't have filmed my hands, right? I just made excuses without self-reflection. But then another sister told me, if you were having trouble, we could have postponed and let you practice some more. But you can't just muddle through like that. You're the lead. How will it look if we don't show you playing the guitar? This was so irresponsible, so careless of you. Hearing her say so, like that really got to me. I started to think, if my brothers and sisters all think that I'm careless in my own duties, maybe I really am wrong. I wanted the filming to go well. But however you look at it, the project is delayed, and we have to reshoot. I am definitely the only one to blame. I felt bad when I thought about that. I stopped protesting and started reflecting. Later, I found a passage of God's words that really moved me. I'll read you what it said. What is the result of performing your duty cursorily and hastily and treating it lightly? You could do your duty well, but you do it poorly, not up to standard. And God will not be satisfied with your attitude. If, originally, you had sought and cooperated normally, if you had engaged your mind, put your heart into it, and put all of your effort into it, if, over a period of time, you had put all your labor and thoughts into it, or searched for references, and committed all your mind and body to it, Cooperating in this way, God will guide you ahead. You need not exert much strength. When you spare no effort, God will have arranged everything. If you are slick and change your mind halfway through and go astray, then God will show no interest in you. You will have lost this opportunity. And God will say, you are not good enough. You are useless. Go stand off to the side. You like being lazy, right? You like being deceitful and cunning, right? You like taking a rest? Well then, take a rest. God will give this grace and opportunity to the next person. Would you say this is a loss or this is a win? It's a huge loss. That's right. God's words revealed my own state. I had agreed to practice so I could take on the lead role. But I didn't actually do what I'd promised I would. I didn't address my weaknesses or try to improve my chords. I slacked off in practice because I thought it would be too hard. I made the excuse that I didn't have the time and asked the cameraman to avoid filming my hands. I honestly thought I could get away with it, but I delayed the project instead. It was really irresponsible and careless of me. When my duty presented itself, I didn't want to make the effort to rehearse and bear witness to God. Instead, I took the easiest path. And now we had to reshoot practically everything. How could I have been so irresponsible? Just a little more practice, a little more effort, and I wouldn't have harmed the work of God's house. That's yeah. right. 
I really hated myself a bit at that point. And I thought, if I get another chance, I will never be so thoughtless again. Even if I have to exhaust myself practicing those chords, then I'll do what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The others decided to give me another two days to practice the chords. This was really moving for me. I thanked God for giving me a second chance. Thanks, Thanks, be to be to God. God. Thanks be to God. After that, during rehearsals, I worked hard to memorize all the chords, but I felt really stressed. I was afraid my technique still wasn't up to par and that two days wouldn't be enough for me. I got anxious again, but the more anxious I got, the more I forgot and vice versa. That morning went by in a flash. I still couldn't play the song very well, and my hands were sore. I usually took a break from practicing right after lunchtime, but this time I knew I had to keep going. I knew that I couldn't stop, but, but had to use every moment I had to get the chords right. Once my heart was right, God guided me. That afternoon, without realizing it, I figured out how to memorize the chords in sections. It just got better and better. But I'd been practicing for so long that my hands started to swell and I was tempted to slack off again. When I caught myself thinking this way again, I thought of something God had said and I rushed to read it. When faced with a duty that needs your effort, expenditure, and requires you to dedicate your body, mind, and time, you must not hold anything back or leave leeway. If there's leeway and you're calculating or are slick, you will do a poor job. You might say, no one saw me acting in a slick way. How cool. What kind of thinking is this? You think you have pulled the wool over people's eyes and over God's too. In truth, does God know what you've done? He knows. Generally, people who interact with you a lot will find out and will say that you are a person who is slippery, not diligent, and puts in 50 or 60% of efforts, or 80 at the most. They will say you're muddled, that you turn a blind eye to your work and do not take it seriously. You put in some effort when told to do something and more when supervised. If no one is around to check, you slack off. If you are dealt with, then you put your heart into it. Otherwise, you are constantly dozing off and trying to get away with whatever you can, assuming that no one will notice. Time goes by and people notice. They say, this person is unreliable. If you give him an important duty to perform, he'll need constant supervision. He can do ordinary tasks and jobs that don't involve principles. But if you give him vital duties to fulfill, he'll likely just mess it up and then you'll be hoodwinked. People will see through him, and all his dignity and integrity will be gone. If no one can trust him, then how can God? Would God entrust him with any major tasks? Such a person is untrustworthy. God's words made me realize just how perfunctory I was being in my duty. I was complacent in practicing the chords, and I wasn't reaching for the highest standard. I was not exerting myself fully. I was skating by and muddling through my duty. No integrity, not trustworthy. I'd always thought of myself as passionate and hardworking in my duties, that I had undying loyalty. But now I saw that I hadn't really been focused on the results, but had just muddled through. How was that doing my duty? If I carried on that way, who would dare to trust me again? Wasn't I gambling away my integrity and also my honor? It's true. It's true. I'd made a transgression last time, and I didn't want to repeat it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It didn't matter if my hands swelled up or if I was tired. My morals and dignity mattered more. So I resolved to keep practicing the chords again and again, no matter how difficult. Once I'd resolved to truly repent, I saw God's blessing and guidance. That very day, I practiced until past midnight, 
and managed to memorize almost all of the chords. That's great. I practiced the entire next day until I was completely familiar with the whole song. During filming, I intently focused on each step, and I prayed silently. To my surprise, we filmed the whole thing in one whole take. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Thank God. Seeing it turn out this way gave me a sense of peace. I tasted the sweetness of practicing the truth. Thanks, Thanks, be, Thanks, to be, to God. God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. I was later assigned to compose music. I had not composed a song for a long time, so I was a bit out of practice to say the least. In particular, we'd been doing rock songs, which I'd never done, so I was a bit worried. But I knew this was a duty I needed to fulfill, and I had to do my best. So I made a plan for myself to complete two songs by the end of the month. I worked overtime composing, and when I was tired, I asked God to give me strength. I stumbled upon a melody and quickly turned it into a full song. When it was done, I had my brothers and sisters listen to it. They said it was okay and was the right style of rock. But inside, I thought, if I worked more and polished the chorus melody, the song would be even better. But I had second thoughts. I didn't have a clear direction at the time. And I didn't want to exert myself. Besides, my brothers and sisters didn't have a problem with it. It was good enough. Plus, I'd only just learned how to compose, so it was normal for it to be flawed. I submitted it to the team leader. Days later, he told me that I was on the right track, but the melody was rough. He suggested I think about the lyrics a bit more. I felt a bit resistant to this. And I thought, I just learned how to compose this kind of song. You are asking too much of me. I had already spent a lot of time on it and a few more days waiting for his feedback. Half a month had already gone by. Seeing there was no progress, I was a little anxious. Revising the composition would really take a lot of effort and I didn't know how it would turn out. So I decided to rewrite the main tune. The team leader said it was lacking a melody and sounded like a kid's song. I felt really dejected. And then I thought, I'm giving it my all, but not a single song has been approved. What should I do? Later, I wrote a few more melodies, but they didn't accept any of them. I was so distraught. I thought about my decision to compose two songs by the end of the month, but I hadn't even finished one. I'd failed in my duties. Was I a good for nothing? In a gathering later on, the team leader reminded me, your compositions are quite original and the styles are good. So why hasn't anything been approved yet? You're not paying attention to the lyrics you're writing. So the words and the melody don't fit at all. It gets worse with every change. This is holding up the work of God's house. Then another brother chimed in. You're not singing precisely enough on the recordings. Some of them don't even match the sheet music. You're being careless. Being dealt with and reprimanded was humiliating. I was feeling really ashamed. I just wanted to crawl into a hole. When I got home, I prayed to God. God, I've been perfunctory in my duty. I haven't been devoted. But I don't know how to resolve this problem. Please guide me. Later, I read this in God's words. Is it not something within a corrupt disposition to handle things so flippantly and irresponsibly? What exactly is that thing? It is scumminess. They always say that's about right and close enough. It is an attitude of maybe, possibly, and four out of five. They do things perfunctorily and are satisfied to muddle along. They see no point in being serious or precise or point in seeking principles. Is this not something within a corrupt disposition? 
Is it a manifestation of normal humanity? To call it arrogant and dissolute is entirely right, but the most accurate word is scummy. Such scumminess is present in the humanity of most people. They wish to do the bare minimum, and there is a whiff of deceit in all that they do. They cheat others when they can, cut corners when they are able, and are loath to spend much time or thought considering matters. So long as they are not revealed, they think all is well, and thus muddle forward. To them, doing a job well is too much trouble. Such people learn nothing to mastery, and they do not apply themselves in their studies. They just want to learn the basics and call themselves experts, then muddle their way through. Is this not an attitude people have toward things? Is it a good attitude? This attitude that such people adopt toward events and things is in a few words to muddle through. And such scumminess exists in all corrupt men. How do you distinguish between noble people and base people? Look at how they approach people, events, and things. Look at how they act, how they handle things, and how they behave when issues arise. People with character and dignity are serious, diligent, willing to make efforts. People without character and dignity are desultory and slipshod in their actions, always up to some trick, always wanting to muddle through. They learn no skill to mastery. No matter how long they study, they remain confounded by ignorance in matters of skill or profession. If you don't press them for answers, all seems fine. But as soon as you do, they panic. Sweat drenches their brows. There's no response. Those are people of low character. Only when I read this did I realize that I'd been careless in my duty because there was something scummy within me. I wanted to do the least possible in everything with no concern for the quality of my work. I didn't want to seek the principles of the truth and do my duty as God demands. When I think about this time, whether it was filming a video or composing a song, whenever I faced a problem that required effort, I was happy with small efforts. I didn't try to improve or work hard. In fact, I knew that if I worked harder and was more attentive, I would do better. But I only ever did the bare minimum, always indulging myself. So I couldn't advance in work or bear witness for God through my duty. And I held up the church's work as a result. How could I say I'd done my duty? I was clearly impeding the work of God's house. That's when I saw just how serious my scumminess was. I muddled through, I drifted along, I tried to fool God. I was lacking character and dignity. God likes those who do their duty honestly and diligently, who seek the principles of the truth in the face of difficulties to fulfill their duty. They have honor and integrity and are valued in God's eyes. Compared to them, I was unfit to be called human. I felt ashamed. At that moment, I understood. God was saving me through my brother's pruning and dealing with me. Otherwise, I'd always be muddling through this way. I wouldn't do my duty well. I'd disrupt the work of God's house and be cast out by God. I read more of God's words. God works for mankind's sake, and man cooperates for the sake of God's management. After God has done all that he is supposed to do, man needs to do his best to practice and to cooperate with God. In the work of God, man should spare no effort, should offer up his loyalty, and should not indulge in numerous notions and await passively. God can sacrifice himself for man. Why can't man offer his loyalty to God? God is of one heart to man. So why can't man cooperate a little? God works for mankind. So why can man not perform some of his duty for the sake of God's management? God's work has come this far. 
Yet you see but don't act. You hear but don't move. Aren't such people the objects of perdition? God has already devoted his all to man. So why today is man incapable of earnestly performing his duty? For God, his work comes first, and his management work is most important. For man, practicing God's words and meeting God's demands come first. This you should all understand. I was so moved as I thought over God's words. God is of one heart to man. He has become flesh twice to save humanity, who's corrupted by Satan. He has been humiliated, rejected by generations, and has suffered so much. Faced with our deep corruption and our senseless apathy, God has never abandoned us. He still expresses the truth to save us. Our caliber is lacking, and we're slow to accept the truth. But God fellowships with us so sincerely. Sometimes he uses metaphors and examples, and he tells stories to guide us. From every angle and in every way. This is so we can understand the truth and enter into it. God takes responsibility for our lives, and he won't rest until he's completed us. Seeing God's disposition and his earnest intentions was really inspiring. But when I thought about how I'd treated God and how I'd approached my duties, I was filled with regret. I didn't want to muddle through in my duty. I went before God and prayed, asking how I could stop being so careless and do my duty well. I then read God's words. What is duty? It is a task entrusted by God. So how should you fulfill your duty? By acting in line with God's demands and standards and principles of the truth, rather than human subjective desires. This way, your duty will be up to standard. What does it mean to take it seriously? It does not mean making some small effort or suffering a little physical pain. What is key is that God is in your heart and a burden. In your heart, you must weigh the importance of your duty and then carry this burden and responsibility in all you do and put your heart into it. You must make yourself worthy of God's mission to you as well as everything God has done for you and his hopes for you. Only doing so is being serious. Going through the motions is pointless. You cannot fool God. If there is no real price and no loyalty in your duty, then it is not up to standard. Amen. This brought me clarity within my heart. Our duty is entrusted to us by God. We must do as he demands and act according to the truth. We can't pick and choose or blindly follow our own desires and do whatever we want. We have to meet the standard because just appearing to work hard doesn't cut it. The main thing is to have a sense of responsibility. Yes. yes. To be really diligent and earnest, to seek, ponder, and find ways to improve. Then we can do our duty and please God. Uh, right. Later, when I was composing a song, I carefully analyzed the lyrics and found a few songs that matched their mood. I thought hard about how other people use melody to express the same feeling and about the meaning of the lyrics and the mood. After getting a grasp on all that, I started composing. I asked for my brothers and sisters advice later on, revised the composition twice, and then it was finally ready. It only took a week to finish the song. Another composition I'd revised was also accepted and approved. <laughs> Thank God. Thanks be to God. I see that doing our duty attentively, according to the principles of truth, gives us God's blessings and guidance. Right. When I saw how little time it took to finish those songs, I felt even more remorse and regret for muddling through my duty before. I saw how badly I'd been corrupted by Satan, 
how serious my scumminess was, and how careless I was in my work. Thanks to God's arrangements, having my brothers and sisters deal with me, I can seek the truth to resolve my corrupt dispositions and perform my duty with devotion. Mm -hmm. I give thanks for God's salvation. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Thanks Experiencing be to God. this thanks environment. Be to God. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Yes, thanks be to God. Wonderful.